Hello everyone. Today we are talking about an important concept regarding symmetric encryption, the Feistel network. If you have not seen the video on symmetric encryption yet, I would encourage you to do so. You can click the link on the top right corner of the video or in the description to access it. There are three main challenges posed to an encryption algorithm. The encryption needs to be non-linear, so that calculating the inverse is complicated, invertible, so that we can decrypt our ciphertexts, and complex enough to add confusion to the encryption process. Horst Feistel, a German-American IBM employee, came up with a solution to this problem in 1973. The beauty of the Feistel network is that it stays invertible even if you use an arbitrary non-invertible function s. The function s, if you remember from the previous video on symmetric encryption, denotes the s-box of the encryption process, which means it substitutes bits with other bits. Let's look at an example to see how it works. If we take these 8 bits, we first separate them into a left and a right part. The Feistel network now works as follows. It takes as input these two parts and XORs, the left part with the output of a function s, applied to the right part. The original right part stays the same. Note that the substitution function s uh, used is arbitrary. I will quickly explain why. First, let's remember a fact about XOR, which I explained before. If you XOR a value twice, it eliminates itself. So X, XOR Y, XOR Y results in the original value X. Now let's look at why this is important. The Feistel network uh, is its own inverse, meaning to decrypt something that has been encrypted with the Feistel network, I just need to apply it again. Formally, if you apply the Feistel network on itself, as you can see here, it results first in this. Applying the Feistel network again results in this. As you can see already, the function s of r is xored twice, which means that it eliminates itself. This in turn means that only l and r remain, which is the original value we encrypted initially. If we look at our example again and say that s simply switches all bits to 1, which is obviously not reversible, but you will see that we don't need the reverse operation as demonstrated before. The result uh, is now these bits. Exoring the inner part yields this result. Naturally, you run the Feistel network again on the right side to obfuscate those bits as well. But for simplicity reasons, let's look at decryption now. As said before, we just apply the Feistel network again, which yields this result. We apply function s again, so we turn all the bits on the right part to 1. Exoring the inner part results in these bits, which are indeed our initial bits. This way, the Feistel network ensures confusion and diffusion, both characteristics which are demanded from Shannon of an encryption algorithm. And that concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.